welcome everybody who's joining us on YouTube. Welcome to our Wednesday morning class that shall not be named. <laughs> so excited because we have a great topic today. Welcome to everybody joining us on YouTube. So far we got Eva, we got Arlene, we got Ron, we got Michael, and we got Arnold. And we got a lot more people on YouTube. So today we have a great topic. It was created by Arlene. And we'd been talking about a little bit of Jews entertainment. So the question was, let's talk about Jews who change their name for the entertainment world. We'll add a little bit other things too, because obviously so many did. And we'll talk about the reasons why. And we'll talk a little bit about those who didn't as well. So if you look at the list of people, I know I asked everybody, the, 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 it's unbelievable. Betty Persky was, of course. Lauren Bacall. Lauren Bacall. I remember uh, Arlene mentioned that to me. I think you knew her or had family who knew her. And so there's so many, and we'll go through that. But obviously, what was the reason they changed their names? Why did so many change their names? They changed their names because they, in Hollywood, as well as on TV, they, had, they wanted to get ahead. And uh, by having a Jewish name, they felt they could not get ahead. Right. And that, I think that was the main reason. One was if you had a Jewish sounding name, then in Hollywood, but I think outside of Hollywood as well, it was easier to find work, even in Hollywood. Uh -huh where a lot of the administrators and people who ran the studios were Jewish, but, but they had changed their names as well in many cases. So the idea was if you were going to be in the public eye, it was better to have a certain type of name. And so what people did is they took them from a wide range of places. So we think of it as possibly anti-Semitism, where there certainly would have been some of that, but what do we? What is interesting is it just Jews who change their name? We see a lot of different groups of people changing their names to go to Hollywood, especially Jews and Italians. Jews definitely the most famous because their names were so obvious. But lots of people change their names because they have a name that they think will be more Hollywood esque. And so, although the Jews are really the most famous for doing this. Others did this as well. I mean, so it's it's not just Jews, um, but certainly uh, it was, you know, we are probably did it more than anybody else. Ron, did you want to say something? No. So we'll go through the list, but as we see, a lot of these people were born in America, but they're, they were first generation. A few of them had come from abroad. They were born somewhere else and came here. But all of them changed their names to fit in. But as we also know, as time has gone on, what are we seeing now that you don't have to do it as much today? We have people who have very overtly Jewish names who are now becoming very famous. Can you name some of them? Sarah Silverman. Jerry Seinfeld, Adam Sandler, Anna, uh, with Andy Sandberg. So nowadays you don't have to do a change your name, but you still will have some. There's also a rule in Hollywood if you want to be part of whatever the um, organization the actors are part of, SAG. If you want to be part of SAG, you, ha you have to change your name if somebody already has that name. So that's really interesting. So after all these years, you'll see some Jewish people and non-Jewish people add a middle initial, like Michael J. Fox. Why did he add the J? Mm. Because there was already a SAG person who had was named Michael Fox, so he had, he had to add that. So there's a lot of reasons, not just because you're Jewish, but there's a lot of other reasons. So let's go through and see some of the famous people who changed their names um, before we do, who has any names that they were shocked were changed that didn't realize were Jewish? I found one just today that I did not know was Jewish and I couldn't believe I didn't know. Well, for one, Cary Grant. Cary Grant. I didn't know Cary. What was his original name, Ron? Archibald, Archibald Leach. Archibald Leach. C-H. Leach. 
Okay. By, by Jewish parents. Archibald Leach. That is a name that he is probably very happy he changed. Here's another one. I don't know if anyone is old enough to remember, but Lorne Green. Yeah. Oh, from Bonanza? Lorne Green was Chaim Leibovitz. Nice. I did not know that. Um, and yet he changed his name to something that does sound a little Jewish, but not so much green. How about, how about Sid Charisse? Sid was Charisse it? was Tula uh, Finkley. Nice. Um, I had no idea. <clears throat> of course, Zaza Gabor, uh, she was Jewish. What was uh, her original name? Sarah Gabor. Sarah Gabor. How about Charles Bronson? What was his original name? Charles Borshinsky. Nice. <laughs> um, there's a whole lot you know I, I gave up after after I pulled up this page because there are hundreds more it's incredible that so yeah, many people uh, 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 June, June Allison uh, let's see where do I have that what was June Allison's original one I'm looking um, her name was uh Ella Geisman. Wow. Well, I did not know that Douglas Fairbanks Sr. was Jewish. Oh, yeah. I, I For some reason, I missed that one all these years. Uh, probably the most famous leading actor of the teens and 20s and 30s. And if obviously not counting uh, Charlie Chaplin, who's more com comedic, obviously. But Douglas Fairbanks was Douglas Elton Thomas Ullman. <laughs> I like how Albert Brooks changed his name, the famous uh, actor. He changed the name because anybody know his original name? Albert Einstein. Uh, how, about, how about Paula Goddard? Who's that? Who? Marion Levy. Paula Goddard. Is Paula Goddard. Paula Go oh, Paula Goddard. So. Let's go through the list. So, Ron, just give us a bunch more, and then we'll go through, and then we'll start discussing some other things. Okay, Paul Muni. You have to do five minutes. His first <laughs> name was Muni, but his last name was Weisenkopf. I, I, I think you should give us the original name and see if we can figure out what it is. <laughs> okay. So Dorothy, gonna... Dorothy uh, Kalmeyer. Lamour. Dorothy Lamour. That's right. That's right. All right. <laughs> the only Dorothy I know who's not in Kansas. How about Lee Jacob? J A O B. Ron, it's hard to hear you when you've got the pad in front of your face. Sorry. Um, let's see. I'm going to turn salt. Was that Lee Merriweather? No. Lee J. Cobb. I think I knew he was Jewish, yeah. Uh, Tony Randall. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> 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 Leonard Rosenberg. Tony Randall. <laughs> God. Yes. Um, uh, what, David, what I... David Kaminsky. That's Danny Kay. You oh, got really? it. Good job. Yeah. yeah. Well, that one I knew. <laughs> It wasn't a guess. Uh, Charles Bushinsky. Charles Boyer? No. I'm guessing. No. Charles Bronson. Ah, okay. Um, let's see. I gave you that. Give you that. Uh, it's your I S S U R. Dana Lovich. That's Kirk, Kirk Douglas. That's you what I know. Yeah, I know that one. Um, I read his bio. His Netta, Netta, N E T A, Netta Lee Herschlag. <laughs> Natalie Portman. And uh, 
it just goes on and on and on and on, you know. I'll give a couple more. Uh, uh, Nathan oh, Burma. I'll, I'll, I'll give you. Oh, George Burns. I'll, I'll give you who's Jewish, but I don't. I don't have their uh, what the original name was. Scarlett Johansson is Jewish. Yeah. Myla Kunis. Uh, Winona Ryder. Uh, she was Winona Horowitz. And uh, <laughs> Gwyneth Paltrow. Uh, Myla Kunis. Um, let's see. Uh, it, it just goes on and on and on. I'll give a couple more. Jacob Cohen. Rodney Dangerfield. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Bernard Schwartz. That's a very famous one. Yeah. Tony Curtis. Tony Good Curtis. job. Emmanuel Goldenberg. You know, Tony Curtis, Bert, Bert, uh, he, he lived on the same block I did in the Bronx. Really? Yeah. Did you ever meet him? No. I didn't either. Uh, let's see. What did I? Uh, Emmanuel Goldenberg was Edward G. Robinson, Nathan Birnbaum. One of my favorites. George Burns. George Burns, uh, who is uh, incredible. Oh, yeah. One of my all-time favorites. Um, who, who can tell me, uh, does anybody know uh, Melvin Kaminsky? Mel Brooks. Good job. Yeah. Uh, How about Abe Vigoda? Abe Vigoda. <laughs> 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 Joseph Levitch. Abe Vigoda played in a lot of movies, including uh, The Godfather. Yes, and yeah. he was. Awesome. What was his name? I'm sorry. I was. Being Abe Vigoda. V I T O D A. Um, Joseph Levitch was Jerry Lewis. Oh, yeah. Jerome Silverman. Gene Wilder. Oh. Yaakov Mosher Maza was Jackie Mason, Aaron Schwatt was Red, I was sorry, was uh, Red Buttons, Jack Benny's last name was Kubelski. So there's an incredible number of them who have done this. A couple others, <clears throat> excuse me, Erwin Allen Kneiberg, Alan King, <coughs> Barry Allen Pincus, a singer. Barry Manilow. Barry Manilow. Oh. Eric Weiss, not an actor, but a famous entertainer. Harry Houdini. Oh, my God. Elliot Goldstein. Elliot Gould. Elliot Gould. Gould. Carol Klein. It's Carol. Uh, Carol King. <laughs> Carol King. Yeah, thank you. Rosetta yeah. Jacobs. That's a hard one to figure out. I'm not doing it sure. That Rosetta Jacobs was Piper Laurie. What was Dinah uh, Shore's original name? I thought Dinah Shore's uh, was uh, Francis Ro Francis Rose Shore. Francis Rose Shore. But we'll also see that there were other, you know, people who changed their name. Um, who were, you know, like opera singers changed their names. And a lot of people think that Jewish opera singers changed their names because they were Jewish, but it was like a tradition to change your name if you went into the opera. Uh, and in other places, what Ralph Lauren's name, anybody know his original name? Ralph Lipschitz. Ralph Lipschitz. That one I knew. Samuel Goldwyn was Gelbfish. How about, how about Arlene Schwartz? What's Arlene Schwartz's original name? Arlene Lipschitz. Arlene Lipschitz as well. So famous. No, people. no, there's no age. <laughs> but some people didn't change their names, which is interesting. For instance, the Marx Brothers only changed their first names. Yeah. They kept their last names. And some remained with names that were fairly Jewish and became famous. Uh, Leonard Cohen is Leonard Cohen. 
Um, Paul Stanley of KISS was Paul Stanley Eisen. But Gene Simmons, who uh, was born in Israel, actually changed his name completely. Does anybody know Gene Simmons, who was the famous? Sure. Yeah. He, his, his original name was Chaim Witz. Oh, God. Lou Reed um, kept the same name, but his father changed the name from Rabinowitz to Reed. So Lou Reed's father is actually the one who changed it. Joey hmm. Bishop was Joey Got Joseph Gottlieb, so some he he changed his to be very overtly Christian, while others uh, didn't. So it became a little bit more in vogue, I guess, in the '60s because two of the most famous uh, singers of the '60s didn't change their names: Simon and Garfunkel, right. all Simon Art Garfunkel, but Bob Dylan did change his name. Barbara Streisand didn't change her. Barbara it? Streisand did not. Some of them like put their Jewishness right out there. Um, obviously, Barbara Streisand's breakout role was playing a Jewish people. And then you have people like Whoopi Goldberg, who changed her name from Karen Elaine Johnson to take on a name that was overtly Jewish. Yeah. Which is kind of ironic in many ways. Uh, but that's what she did, and it worked, I guess. I mean, she's super talented, but, again, she became very famous. You know, one th one thing about Barbara Streisand, um, when she was entering uh, the um, uh, the uh, as a movie actress, they wanted her to get a nose job, and she refused because, one, she thought it may change her voice. Smart move. But she never did get – she never got a nose job. And she still made it big. And on the other side, does anybody remember Erin Gray? She was the star of Dirty Dancing. She was in Ferris Bueller's Day Off and Red Dawn. She is the daughter of Joel Gray. And right. she did oh, get a nose job. And that nose job, uh, again, helped to keep her out of hot. I mean, it basically changed her. And she wasn't getting any parts after the nose job. So well, yeah. Joel Gray's kind of father was Mickey Katz. Who? Mickey Katz, do you know that yeah. name? Was Joel Gray's father? Mickey Katz. Yeah. Yeah. Was Joel yeah. Gray's father? I didn't. I don't think I knew yeah. that. Wow. Yeah. Oh wow. That's I. Was, wow. Yeah. I didn't. Mickey Katz must have had him when he was pretty young. I did not know that. And by the way, Bob Dylan's original name was Robert Zimmerman. So. Right. 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 So, yes. not only did Jews change their names though, go to Hollywood, they also changed their names to go into fields where they were restrictions. So in oh. Hollywood, there were some limited restrictions for Jews and leading actors. Of course, Douglas Fairbanks got around that. Kirk Douglas did, you know, the Tony Curtis. So um, some did if you had a certain look. But if you wanted to go into other fields where there were very specific, uh, like the medical field, where they allowed, you know, maybe 3% of a medical school class to be Jewish, you would change your name because, you know, religiously, but we can, you know, we look like everybody else, Karen. No, my father, when he got out of, uh, he was in World War II, got out of service, he had studied advertising. And you, if you were Jewish, you couldn't get into that. So that um, was one of the last ones to get changed because yeah, well, Jews were allowed. So our name, well, it, he, 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 he Finally went back to his original name, which was Gelski, which it what it had been in Europe. Um, but he changed it to I think Geller or Gel, maybe Gel is something he thought would sound less Jewish and he could break into that industry. It didn't work. So I guess he yeah. took well advertising was back. a very regulated industry, and Jews were only yeah. allowed to I do the advertising that, for I, Jewish businesses. I think I, Eva has a uh, I'm sorry. It, Eva, Eva, go ahead. So I apologize. Oh, I was going to say that our name, Paul's name, was Gladstein and got changed to Gellert. Oh, really? Who changed it? Did he change it? They or? did after when the uh, uh, his parents changed it. When, when they moved the, to America? No, it's when the uh, revolution was after the revolution in Hungary. Oh, really? It, it sounded um, right. more of a non-Jewish name, I guess. So that was more for safety, it sounds like. Safety, yes, it was. Or in America, it's more for jobs. So that's a really good point. Changing your name for a job is a lot nicer than changing your name because your life is at risk. 
And that's right. one of the good things about America it wasn't not there was never really an issue. When my uh, father's father came to this country, his name, from what my father said, was Gutelovich. And when he came through, they changed his name to Schwartz, not <laughs> the the the, um, oh, the the people that checked Ellis you Island. through Ellis Island. They changed his name to Schwartz. That is, I mean, again, that you don't even have the choice, uh, Karen. I was going to say, I don't really think they changed names at Ellis Island because all the manifests were completed at the port of departure. So, like in my great, my maternal grandfather's case, the the first brother who arrived in America changed his name uh, once he got here, and then the others were told, "This is the name we have in America." So all the manifests. It could, have been, it, the it American. could have been at Castle Gardens. Oh, maybe. That was before 1892. It was Castle Gardens. Yeah, well, right. But really, really interesting. Island, didn't you? people change their names either be before boarding the ship in Europe or once they got off the ship and through immigration? That's where they changed it. Change it. But really, oh. didn't happen at Ellis Island. I know that's kind of a, uh, what do they call yeah. it? A Bob of my son. Urban myth. Know, something like that, yeah. That yeah. means a joke I've been telling for 40 years. <laughs> the basis of truth. Is that Shane for Sean Ferguson? Yeah. yeah. That, do yeah. you know that joke, Rabbi? No. Oh, go ahead, Michael. I'll let you tell it. Well, you know, this guy gets on a ship to come to America, and one of his buddies says, you know, you know, Chaim Yankel's not a good name in, in the United States. So, uh, you know, change it to something American like Roger Smith. And... Uh, the, the story goes, he gets, you know, to Ellis Island and uh, the uh, immigration guy says, what's your name? And he turns to his friend and he goes, oh, Shane Ferguson. And he becomes nice Shane Ferguson. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, it, but as much as changing the name, you still have people like Paul Michael Glazer, Dustin Hoffman, who didn't. But you also had other people who changed their names, and it wasn't because they had Jewish names, it's because they had foreign sounding names. Yeah. And so uh, that also created a need. It wasn't just Jews, it was people who had uh, names that they didn't consider uh, to be, like uh, Sophia Loren was Sophia Skikolau. She's not Jewish, by the way. Rita Hayworth was Margarita Carmen Cancini. So those are, I think they're, they're both uh, Italian names. And so even though they played kind of foreign-esque characters often, they wanted them to be have. But then you have, you know, people like Robert De Niro and uh, who did not change his name. And, you know, so he started acting in the 60s. And Dustin Hoffman, as I mentioned earlier, who was Jewish, although the 60s. So there's a wide range of people. I guess, you know, if you're Al Pacino and you think your name sounds pretty cool, I don't know if it sounds cool because he's so cool or because the name is cool. But you also have people change their name, like Ringo Starr, who changes to something that is pretty obvious that it was changed. And so some people wanted to be a little bit more recognized for their name. So they changed it to something that was really different and others changed it to something a little bit no, normal, kind of normalizing it like Natalie Portman is or so, um, or John Stewart. John Stewart was John Stewart Lieberman. So even John Stewart who really started acting in the eighties changed his name because he thought Lieberman was not going to work for him or so it's really interesting to see that some people decide to go one way or the other, and we only know that people became successful. We don't know how many people didn't become successful because they changed their name to something that wasn't appealing. What's and, interesting, you know, you just mentioned John Stewart that having changed his name, and, and yet certainly in the 90s and early 2000, 2000s. I mean, part of his shtick was about his Jewish Right, family. exactly. And that, you know, so it's kind of, and Sarah Silverman, of course, but, 
you know, but it's uh, it, it's sort of interesting how, how that uh, happens. And then you have other people like George Burns. No, right. not at all. Right. And, and, and the Marx Brothers never, but kind of an underlying, you know, theme at times. Yeah. I, I don't know. It really has become more popular in the recent last 30, 40, 50 years to make fun of yourself because of your religion or your faith or your background. Where in the 20s and 30s, you really didn't see, in movies, you didn't really see that at all until the, really the 60s, in TV, the 70s. But then you have people who don't change their name and you think they should have. A very good example was uh, Barry Goldwater. Never changed his name. Uh, he was not Jewish. I believe his father was Jewish. And uh, Harry Golden, again, one of my favorite all-time writers, uh, famously said he knew the first Jewish presidential candidate would be Episcopalian. So <laughs> a really good quote about it. Because Goldwater obviously sounds Jewish, uh, but he wasn't. Uh, Albert Saperstein changed his name to Albert Sabin. I think I know why. Does anybody know why Albert Saperstein probably changed the name to Albert Sabin? Because Al Saperstein was the founder of the Harlem Globetrotters. Oh, oh right. right. And he was very well known with, for this right. group that uh, for uh, many years. Um, so uh, Harry Moses Horitz, by the way, was Mo Howard from the Three Stooges. All the, stu the most of the Stooges, uh, not counting Larry, were Horwitz. So Curly, Shem, and Mo were all Horwitzes. And there's actually a picture of the three of them visiting Savannah if you go to the Crystal Beer Parlor. <laughs> so just in case you're wondering. Yeah. And so again, now when it comes to Hollywood today, and in the modern world where anti-Semitism is on the rise, I haven't seen myself much of a change in uh, Hollywood in terms of restrictions or any of that. I think a lot of Hollywood is focused on a certain crowd. And so we don't see, we see a lot of Jewishly prominent people not hiding their Jewishness a lot of them come out more than ever before, like Gwyneth Paltrow and, and Natalie Portman, all the MCU people, and uh, Scarlett Johansson, who come out as very Jewish, even if they're not religiously Jewish. They, you know, jo Scarlett Johansson very famously refused to, uh, when she, I think I told this story, she was, does anybody know the name of the soda company? She was a spokesperson for, she was a spokesperson for a, an Israeli company that had a factory in the West Bank that made soda. It was the kind of soda where it, you would you had to, you bring the soda water and you poured in the syrup and you could mix them together to create your own soda pop. They, they made they made the uh, the machine that made the soda. Is that what it was? They made the machine that made the sodas, and they yeah. had. The, and I've never had it before. I should probably because I, but. Uh, her some of the one of the bigger companies she was a sponsor for came to her and said if you don't drop this company uh, we're going to drop you and she said okay and she she the bigger company dropped her and mm -hmm. she said i'm going to still promote this this you know i gave my word i would and so that was i thought that was pretty cool uh, ironically the because of all the pressure, I believe that soda pop company had to close their West Bank factory. We can check that, which was which basically, from all the pressure, they closed their West Bank factory, which ironically took away all the jobs from the Palestinians living in the West Bank. So it was a very big irony that all these people were pressing for them not to have their factory there. So we see a lot of people now very much promoting who they are and what we've seen is this now stretches to other groups as well so like with comedy like with change names you see people who are italian promoting italian being italian you see people who are african-american promoting themselves as african-american leaders and it's really uh really blossomed in the last 50 or 60 years being jewish was a little different 
in many respects because we, a lot of Jews look like anybody else. And so we could pass very easily, which is not the case for people who are African American or maybe mm -hmm. Middle Eastern or Asian or has very, very, very distinct Italian look because Ashkenazic Jews, some of them have a distinct look, but a lot of them look like everybody else. It's kind of a plain look in many respects. Uh, and so it was a lot easier. The, the biggest difference was obviously height. We're, we're average on average a little shorter. And, and, um, but you know, it really is interesting to see how the world has changed and how people haven't changed their name as much. I think Arnold Schwarzenegger is a very good example. Arnold Schwarzenegger is has a name that cries to be changed to make it in Hollywood, not Jewish. He's a bodybuilder who wants to become a famous actor, and he's able to do it despite his name. And then people like Sasha Baron Cohen, and of course Gilbert Gottfried, who was who were able to keep their names. So what you do see is the farther back you go, the higher percentage of people who change their name. You know, Joan Rivers was Malinsky. Um, so Buddy Hackett was Leonard Hacker. Mm -hmm. Joey Adams was Abramowitz. Don Adams from uh, Get Smart was William Yarmy. Mm -hmm. um, Milton Burrow was Mendel Berlinger. Mm -hmm. So, uh so there was it was just a fad in many respects but now i think most of the time you change your name just to make it easier to pronounce like jewish people change their name change it to easier pronounce or change it because somebody else already has that name or because you just like another name i don't think we see the same type of we have to change your name because my name is karen blickstein and Blickstein is obviously Jewish. Uh, you may change it because maybe Karen Blickstein is not, you know, easily pronounced in a certain area, so you change it to Karen Blick. Whereas 75 years ago, you would have changed it to Karen Blick because you wanted to get into whatever profession. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, acting would be one of them. Some other ones, J. Scott Greenspan, Jason Alexander. Yeah, this one I think you guys will get Charles Grudinsky, who is one of my favorite actors. Never Charles Grudinsky. He just took off the ski. Charles Grodin. Okay. Mm. You know, it was, what's interesting also, maybe some of you knew this, but Sammy Davis Jr. <laughs> someone asked him in golf, what's your handicap? He says, my only handicap is being a one-eyed colored Jew. <laughs> <laughs> and interesting also, in Las Vegas, when the Rat Pack got together, um, they went to the hotel and they refused to let Sammy Davis Jr. stay there. So Frank Sinatra said, if you don't let him stay there, we're, we're not going to stay here either and we're not going to perform. So the hotel allowed Sammy Davis Jr. to stay at the hotel. Good for them. Well, anti-Semitism. Was it anti-Semitism? <laughs> it's hard to tell that was anti-Semitism. <laughs> what, what he said, being a one-eyed colored Jew, is, yeah. is real. Yeah, you know, I, know, but I don't know if they didn't let him stay because he was African-American or because he was Jewish or both. <laughs> was it one, one of the Rat Pack were Jewish beside, weren't they? Was it yeah, Joey, Joey Bishop was Joey Jewish. Bishop, right? yeah. So 40, 50%. Um, we're yeah. Jewish. What's the last, what's the guy, the other guy, I never remember his name. The one, well, Lee, Lee Marvin. What was it called? What's his name? Lee Marvin. Is that, no, it was he the last one? That, no, not Lee Marvin. There was a, it was Sinatra, Dean Martin, Dean Martin. Sammy Davis, Jr., Joe okay, Bishop, Lawford? and there's a Peter fifth Lawford? one. Was Peter Lawford. Peter Lawford. Is that it? Yeah. Peter, I don't remember. It was, I yeah, don't know. Peter Lawford. Uh, Joey, um, Joey, yeah, I forgot. Joey Bishop. Joey Bishop. Okay. Just yeah, he was Jewish, we said. Yeah, it was Lee. Yeah. yeah Joey, Joey Bishop, I don't know if he, he was definitely born Jewish. 
Peter Lawford was the fourth one, fifth one, you're right. Yeah. yeah. Although, yeah. you know, it was like, oh my God, he's the fifth of the Rat Pack. I remember uh, they were doing an interview and somebody asked, you know, said derisively, well, you know, how's it feel to be the fourth Beatle, Ringo? And I'm like, and everybody's thinking like, he's a Beatle. <laughs> Who cares if he's the fourth Beatle? He is a Beatle. <laughs> so it's, it's Ringo Starr. <laughs> so I thought that was, that's always funny to when you derisively say, oh, he's the fifth of the Wrath Pack. So, uh, and now what we also see is a lot of these Jewish people married people who were, not Jewish, especially in the entertainment industry. So it's ironic that so many Jews were in the entertainment business, but a very high percentage married people who weren't Jewish. Lauren Bacall married. Humphrey Bogart. Humphrey Bogart. Um, Jack Benny married. And Mary Livingston, but I thought she was Jewish. Oh, was she? I thought she wasn't. Was Mary Livingston she Jewish? Converted. Did she convert? Yeah, I think, no, I think she changed her name, but no, I, I'm I not thought she was not Jewish. I, you could be right. I, I could be wrong, wrong too. Yeah. I mean, sure. they, didn't, they weren't married, they weren't official. I mean, on the radio, you know, you are exactly right. Her father was Jewish. Huh. Yeah, her father was David Markowitz, and I never knew that. Her mother was. Esther Wagner Markowitz. I don't. I assume her mother was Jewish too, but I'm not sure. Um, but her father was definitely Jewish, and he was a prosperous Jewish scrap metal dealer. So she was Jewish. Very interesting. I thought she was not. Uh, I know for a fact, though, that Gracie Allen was not Jewish. So I'll be. I'm. I'm. I'm pretty sure about that one. But a lot of these people ended up not married because you know you were not Jewish. You were in. You were part of Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And once you're in that world, you know you're dating other people in that world as well. And so, and then there were others who did convert, like famously, like Elizabeth Taylor and Marilyn Monroe. Mm -hmm. uh, so they felt comfortable converting, probably because they were living in a world where so many people were Jewish. Uh, 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 um, Marilyn Monroe, when she married that uh, writer, he was Jewish. And so Arthur she, Miller. Arthur Miller, there you go. And so she converted. Yeah, and, and again, a lot of people, uh, Gwyneth Paltrow is not Jewish originally. Her grandparents her, her family, her family are Jewish from a few generations back. Like her family is a very, very well-known rabbinical family from like the 19th century and before. She was not raised Jewish. I don't think her parents were raised Jewish. She converted oh. when she married somebody. Yeah, but the thing is that uh, Gwyneth Paltrow's father is Jewish. Is she, I think I thought he was not Jewish. I thought it was like her great grandfather was Jewish. I could be wrong because I read that she converted. So it's a lot of these stars are, um, it, you know, you live in that world and you're probably very comfortable being around Jews because it's not hmm. a big deal because there's so many. Whereas probably uh, a lot of people outside that world. And it's also very interesting the way society works in that you will see, I, I remember in the in the movie, uh, what's Spike Lee's that first big movie um, that he did? What was the, the Spike Lee movie that uh, that made him famous? Oh my gosh. Um, it was uh, it was <clears throat> Man. It was it just a huge do the right thing, do the right thing. Oh, okay. So he's 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 do the right thing, and he's talking to this guy who was very much a racist, and he's like, "Who's your favorite actor?" He's like Eddie Murphy, and who are your favorite singer? And he says somebody like who's a you know who's African you know who's African American? Who's your favorite athlete? Michael Jordan, and he's. And, and there's something different about it when we look in India, which I was reading an amazing article, I use this all the time, you know, it's by far majority Hindu. And Hindus and Muslims do not get along traditionally. That's why Pakistan and, and India are divided. But the most famous Bollywood actors are almost always apparently Muslim which is even though there is a lot of issues between the Hindu population still likes to see and is okay with Muslim entertainers. 
even if there's some prejudice against, and, and, and that is an irony we see here in America too, that a lot of people are okay seeing people in front to, but they don't necessarily want to, you know, to, to, to be friends with them. But we've also seen a very big change, although anti-Semitism has increased, we also know we don't have the same issues that we had before. Whereas in the 1930s, the percentage of people who would have voted for a Jewish president, or people who would not vote for a Jewish president because that person was Jewish, the, a very high percentage. Whereas years later, you know, people who wouldn't vote for somebody who was Jewish, the last one I think was 10% or less than 10% wouldn't vote for somebody who was president because they were Jewish. And the percentage of people who would vote for somebody because they were Jewish running for president was really high. Like, in other words, I would be happy to have a Jewish president. That was way out of proportion. So, so the reputation, I guess, was very good in many respects. So the ironies are all over the place. But we do see these name changes being uh, a little different now. In fact, there is uh, the novelist Irving Wallace. Anybody heard of him? Anyway, his son is a sports writer. Uh, David Wallace was a sports writer. And then he learned that his family changed their name years before he was born. So what did he do? He changed it back to Walshinsky. Oh, I know him. I yeah, know him. exactly. Yeah. So he, but his his name, he grew up David Wallace. He realized his family. I don't know if his grandparents or his parents changed the name, but somebody changed the name before before, and he didn't know. And as he got older, he found out that his original name was Walchinsky, and he changed it back himself. My name is is Robert Haas, but my real name is Robert Hass, because my grandfather changed it to Haas when my uncle was getting picked on in school because of the name Haas. You just How take off it, the H. How was it spelled? It, but they kept the same spelling. Oh, okay. They just changed the pronunciation. So, and what happened was my, fa my grandfather had one brother who only had daughter, had a daughter. And so, she got ma she was married before this and his brother had already died so we were the last passes in the family that still had ha had the name because everybody else was a, a woman who got married and changed her name so we all called ourselves Haas but my cousin Shirley who just died a few weeks ago at around 95 always referred to us as Haas mm. because she was the last one living who had had that name um, besides my father and my uncle. So it was pretty funny. But so we didn't change the, 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 the spelling. They just changed the pronunciation. So it's kind of intriguing. Now, uh, anybody here, did their names get changed from anything way back besides me? I know Eva told us about, about Paul's name. Anybody else? Well, my, I, I my, my grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My one grandfather's family the only of the four grand of my four grandparents, one of them changed their name, and it was it had been Kisilov in well, they were from Vitebsk, which is today's Belarus, and Kisilov became Kessler. And, okay, and that's today. where Aline's uh, grandparents came from, Belarus. Oh yeah, where where yeah? Uh, she well, she had to leave, but uh, oh, I know my grandparents. Yeah, my grandfather, cool. whose name was Nathan Smith, who, who died when I was three, but he was one of these guys who with black sheep who left home and joined the Merchant Marines and wouldn't tell my mother anything. We think his last name was Smithburg, but we're not sure. So we don't even know what his real last name was, but it definitely wasn't Smith. My, In my, grand, my maternal grandmother's name, her whole family was Brodsky. We thought, we think. And... Um, a distant cousin was doing some uh, genealogical research and she asked me if I had come across anybody named Prushka in the family. What was the first letter? P, P, P and Paul. Prushka. Prushka. 
Pushka. And lo and behold, I, I went back and I started looking at, at some documents. I don't have a lot, but, but, I, but I do have some. And yeah, you know, my grandmother was, was, was Pushka. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, on one document. Everything else, it's Brodsky. And no idea, uh, you know, how, why, when the, the name got changed, if it got changed. Uh, because if you, if you go back, I don't know if other people have done any, uh, any, any genealogical research, but I have. I've, I've found some, some things that are, you know, they're, they're inconsistent um, and they're sometimes inaccurate. Uh, it, it, it's really, uh, really very uh, interesting. And this is just one, you know, one family, and maybe I've gone through, you know, 15, 20 documents. I've had a, a miserable time trying to find more. We were in Salt Lake a few years ago, spent probably an hour and a half at the uh, Latter-day Saints uh, geological, genealogical center. And, uh, you know, the, the docent who was helping us, she found something and she was excited. I had it and that was the best she could, she could do. So uh, very, very frustrating. Well, and it's also, you know, it's not, you know, we think of it, the name changing is, is something that's, you know, changing our history, which is certainly true, but, you know, our history doesn't go that far back with names, like last names is relatively new. So yeah. many of our families may not have even gotten a name yeah. until the 19th century exactly. and no earlier than the 15th century or 16th century. So it just depends where you're at. You may never have had a last name. Uh, until it's you know a lot of it came in the 18th century I think with Catherine the Great uh, and the Pale Settlement but so and you know we got our last names a lot of times depending on our wealth you know if you were wealthier you could afford a better name and if you weren't you got a worse name because we all know there's I always forget the third there's only I got to remember this there's only three original Jewish name last names um, one of them is you know Cohen one of them is Levy yeah. yeah. What's the Israel. last one? Israel. Israel. Is it Israel? I think so. Be. I always forget the third one. Cohen, Levi, and Israel. You're right. Perfect. That should be so uh, obvious. Israelites. I mean, yeah, and the Levites. Yeah. Yeah. So those are the only three. <laughs> so even names like if you go to in Europe, especially, and you'll see some very Jewish names from like the 13th and 14th and 12th century, and they'll have their coat of arms, and it's something like Goldberg or, you know, Rabinowitz, and you're thinking, whoa, Jews were knights, and no, no, the, we, we took those names because those were the wealthier Jews who could afford it, you know, or if you were working for a Smith, you might get the name Smith when you change your name because they said, oh, you're working for a Smith, you can have that name for free, you know, um, so that's, that's, that's a really ir irony that our last names are so important to us today, but they don't go that far back. Right. All right. So excellent. Now, what we have is I want to make a couple of one March 22nd. That Wednesday class That's is close. our first back in person one. So if you're interested, please let Flossie know. I know Eva's coming and cooking lots of good food. No pressure, but a lot of pressure. And uh, so we haven't pick topics though for the next couple of weeks um that's one number two i am going to be teaching uh probably two four-part courses for the jea mm. uh, the federation and they coincidentally have their class at the exact same time obviously so i'm going to teach this class as that class i told them i'd only do it if i could go on zoom so we'll still put it on Zoom, still put it on YouTube. It'll just be part of the class with everybody else. So I hope that's okay. And everybody's welcome, obviously, coming to town. Mm -hmm. uh, what we're probably looking at is I'll do a four-part series on Jewish entertainers, which we have done before, but it's something that – and then a four-part series probably on the Kabbalah. So something a little bit more spiritual and more erudite mm -hmm. and serious and something a little bit more fun. Uh, I'll give you guys the dates. It's probably going to be – four weeks in May, and I don't know what else, but I'll let you guys know. So we don't need to set up those. I'm going to set that up with the JA. But for the next couple of weeks, we don't have anything set up. 
And is there anything that people are interested in? I, I would love, we could, did we do the current Israeli um, elections? Did we do that already? I think yeah. we did, didn't we? Yeah, yeah we did. The last week, yeah, we did that, the more recent elections. Yeah, good. I want to oh, make sure. Well, question. You know, well, I, Rabbi, I, I wonder... talking about the, uh, the elections in uh, Israel, what, what, what are the Jewish people um, protesting against? Israel, did we discuss this already? Okay. That, the, that the Supreme Court, isn't it? Yeah, what yes. you have to, what happened, and I'll yes. be giving a sermon this Saturday on it. In Israel, they have a, a you know, a democracy, you vote, but you vote for a party. Mm -hmm. And the party, and there's 120 seats in their house, in their, in their government. So, and your party has to control 61 seats. Right. Because your party will probably get, the biggest party gets 25 seats. So that means you have to get with other parties and say, we have 61 seats. If you have 61 seats, you are running the government. So who's ever part of the now, part of the, that six, that majority is running the government. Okay. What they're trying to propose a law saying that a majority of the Knesset can overturn any Supreme Court ruling which is a real problem because in order to be the ruling, you have to have a majority anyway. So like it's automatic, you have a majority. So whoever's the prime minister has a majority or he's not prime minister or she's not prime minister. So it's basically saying the prime minister of Israel can overturn any Supreme Court ruling. Think about if that happened in America. Joe Biden, the Supreme Court comes out, you know, they have a case right now with the um, with student loan. And we know President Biden wants to go one way. And if the Supreme Court votes against it and says, no, you can't have this student loan forgiveness program. And Joe Biden said, nope, I think we're going to have it. I'm overruling you. Abortion. Or Yeah. So, again, as much as we may not like certain rulings. Um, I got to go. That's what I'm teaching right now. As much as we, uh, thank you, Anna, I apologize. As much as we don't like rulings of the Supreme Court, possibly, as much as we may not like the president or as much as we may prefer the president, let's say I have a lot of money. I prefer this student loan to be forgiven, but do I want my president of the United States to be able to overturn any Supreme Court ruling? That would be a problem. Israel, it's a bigger problem because the prime minister is also in control of the yes. legislative branch right. because he's the head of the party. So in other words, what happens is who is going to be in charge of everything now? The prime minister will be in charge of the executive, legislative, and judicial. One person will be able to be in charge of all three things. That is the problem. That's why... It is a very big issue. This is a bigger issue than Israel's faced in a long time. So, and it looks like it is going to pass unless something changes. So it may have already passed already in the last day or two, I haven't checked. So that's that's the issue. So, so they got lots of people protesting because it will still be a democracy for your voting, but it'll be voting for basically almost your dictator in many respects. Um, so what are the subject matters? Anybody have any ideas of what they'd like to study in the next couple of weeks? You know, this may be, this may not work, but, you know, we talked about all these actors who, actresses who, entertainers who are Jewish, who were born <laughs> Jewish. Um, it's like we're claiming them. And, you know, the, the question I always have is, yeah, so they were born Jewish. To, to what extent are they really Jews? I mean, you're born Jewish, you're always a Jew. I understand that. Oh, right. A good question. So yeah. religious leanings, I would guess. Of, so it doesn't even have to be religious. It could even be secular. Uh, how, you know, Jewish I mean, are, how Jewish are famous people? Something like that? That, that, that works for me. And I, I don't know. How other people feel about that. What does everybody think about that? It's, it's, it really gets into how do we define ourselves as Jews? 
Okay. Well, we're happy to do that. No, that's a good yeah. question. Yeah. yeah, I was having a conversation. Who was I talking to just the other day? And someone said maybe a third of all Jews are Jewish religiously or observing to some degree. And well, we could go over the Pew study. Social, and maybe it's about Jewish identity that we're talking about. We we could go over the last Pew study, which talks about all of these exact things. Yeah. If you want to do yeah. that, the next we yeah. would you like to do well, that? We, yeah, we've kind of done that. You could you've kind of. Have we done, done that already? That already. Well, okay. well, that makes it an easy week for you. That's fine. Um, no, I'm going to do whatever you guys want. I don't need easy. You know, uh, I, I, I don't. I don't know how to how to explain it. I, it's. I, I always say that Judaism, more than any religion I, I know anything about, which isn't a lot, but is the nexus between uh, between religious practice. And and culture and, re, and and Jewish culture is it's very it's very fine. I always use the the example of a seder, which is a religious practice, but it, it's such a part of our our you know, Jewish cultural culture life. Yeah. that even if you're not observant, you're not religious, you don't know anything about Judaism, you might still want to go to a seder. Well, some people have... nodding, no, I'm, I mean, that I'm that just thinking about my parent, my my grandparents, and my mother's. Parents who were, you know, were immigrants who were really more what they were, secular, which was not uncommon in Eastern, you know, in what in the Paley settlement. And so, what for them, we never we had a seder. We didn't do the whole. We didn't do the haggadah. It was just we got together. We had matzah. We had, you know, it was more the traditional foods. Right. My father's family were much more shtetl, religious, orthodox, yeah. and we had these long, you know, drawn out every little. The whole say the whole shemang, and so I I saw this big contrast as a kid. So I think there's a lot of that that we get together for dinner because it's Passover, and we'll have some matzah to make it official. But we're not, you know, I don't know, I don't know how many people do that anymore. That was certainly my my growing up. A lot of people do that still. A very yeah. lot of people do they? It was yeah. the, it was the first night with my mother's family, the second night with my father's, or vice versa. I don't remember. Yeah, I think the seder, as you go from people just getting together, with family to people right. doing the whole schmear. You no, know, um, I yeah. think that um, it, it, it all started uh, where we lost all that when our children went away to college, and they they live all over. You know, it used to be that families live very well, close together. Right. right. Well. Certainly, when I was growing up, we did. Yeah, everybody lived near each other. I remember yeah. my father's uh, father. We it's went so much today, and his service was three hours. <laughs> yeah, the seder. Yeah, the seder. And was that's a seder. short one for some people. I've been to ones yeah. that are five, six yeah. hours. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You count Well, and we and so a couple of things we do have two. We will have two seders here at the synagogue. By the way, just to make sure people, we haven't started signing up. Um, I don't know how many people they haven't voted on how many people are going to allow in. All members obviously will be able to get in one of them. Uh, this Sunday at noon, Karen and Stuart will be starring in the Pormspiel. Karen is playing the uh, one of the main parts, and Stuart is playing one of the main parts. The I think he's the king, right? Or what? No, what he is. No, uh, he's the, um, is he Mordechai? No, he. I forget. Uh, um, 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 I forget. Is he? He's not Haman. I know that. I have it. No. Over. Because yeah. Haman, I gave to the we gave to the rabbi, the other rabbi. It's, it's he's the, the one prince. of the main parts. Yeah, he has. I never forget which. I one. think he's. I thought it was Mordechai. I think he's Mordechai. Maybe not. You might be right. I don't remember. I looked it's, at it. It's, I went through West, it. it's the name is Wesley, but it's. Oh yes, yes. Yeah, Wesley. But, but, I, really, but I'm the Peter Falk role. You are the you're Peter Falk. Yes. Right. It's mm -hmm. the princess. He, he wrote it for a, for a woman, and we actually have a kid who you're going to be working with. So yeah, I saw girl. that. I went through it all, and yep. yeah, so. So if you bring your costume, now we'll have costumes here. It'll be fun. So everybody should come. We'll have free pizza. Yeah. Last year, we had a huge crowd. I don't know if we'll have as big a crowd this year because last year it was enormous. So hopefully we will. Yeah, and yeah. then for them here, we'll be at 6 p.m. where we'll be reading the Megillah. And that'll be on Monday night. So those are the upcoming events. All right, guys. Anything you need from me, please let me know. Wish you all the best. And we'll see you next week at 1030. And uh, looking forward to seeing everybody in person in a couple weeks on on May on the March twenty second in person one. It will also be online. Just let everybody know. All right, guys, stay safe, everyone.
Thank you. Yeah. Everybody. I will see you, you in costume you. on Sunday. See me Saturday morning also, but yes. Saturday morning. I'll see you Saturday morning in costume. Then we'll talk about, yeah, tell me what kind of costume. Okay. Well, yours is a little easier. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I, mean, I figured, you know. I you, just, you, 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 yeah. you, you have to, you're playing the part of a grandmother. I'm the narrator in a way, right? Yeah, you are the narrator. That's yeah. exactly what yeah. you are. Yeah. Right, I'll see you then. All right, very Wait, good. Thanks. Good. Michael. Oh, wow. Michael. Yeah. Uh, on um, March 22nd, we have a men's Seder at Mikvah Israel. Oh, that's right. March 22nd, that oh. night. And uh, would you like to come? I'm, I'm going with uh, Stu. I'm, you know what? I, I already, Floss called me and asked me to drive uh, Malvina to uh, to her house. And I, I told no, her. this is different. Uh, no, this is different. Different. Whoa, 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 whoa. And I told her, which is telling you, is I'm not sure I'm going to be in town that day. Oh, okay. So <clears throat> let me, if I am, I'll, I'll let you know, hopefully in time. All right. Okay. Okay. Thanks. You're going with Stuart, aren't Thank you? you? Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank well, you. If Michael's not, if Michael coming, then we're canceling it. Oh, please don't. Please don't. I There's going to be riots at your house. People would hate me. I, I know. Me. That's what's going to happen. It's okay as long as they don't hate me. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks, stay everybody. safe, everybody. Thank you, everybody.